Good morning, early morning at Intellisys in London. And our keynote speaker of today is preparing, but before she speaks, she talks to me. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Nouria Oliver. Thank you. <laughs> you Good uh, morning. You are the Director of Research in Data Science at Vodafone. Mm -hmm. We know the company. And you also are Chief Data Scientist at Data Pop Alliance, yes. which is a non-profit uh -huh. organization uh -huh. trying to... Trying to have positive impact in the world yeah. through uh, the analysis of uh, big data. Mm -hmm. So there is uh, massive amounts of data today. We know. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it is data, is what is called human behavioral data, is data about people. Yeah. And one of the opportunities that we are not really fully leveraging is the potential that has this data to help us make better decisions. In, in what areas? Where would you say? Would save lives. For example, natural disasters. There's just been a few natural disasters in the past week. Yes. And when there is a natural disaster, uh, two very important questions that you need to answer is how many people are in the affected areas and where those people are. And thanks to the existence of mobile phones and the fact that mobile phone penetration is almost 100%, even in developing economies, it's mm -hmm. very high, mm -hmm. you can see the mobile phone as a sensor of humanity. So yes. through the analysis of the levels of activity in the cell towers, you can infer how many people there are in a certain area. You can organize and your that's help. that's very valuable, exactly. You can, you can uh, size the help that you're sending yep. Yep. appropriately. You can know where to send it. You can understand if there has been population displacements, yes. where those displacements have taken place yep. and so forth. Another very interesting area is public health. Mm -hmm. uh, when there is the, the risk of a pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, population mobility is very important because an infectious disease doesn't become a pandemic if people don't move. If I have the flu and I stay in my house, there is no flu pandemic because I don't infect anyone. Yeah. It's just the fact that I move that makes the disease spread. So understanding mobility is critical. Yes. And we can yes. do that through, again. If you have an again, infection, yeah. stay where you are, yeah. and then you could organize that yeah. better. Yeah. These are important issues. Yeah, very important <laughs> issues. Yeah. So what are you working on at Vodafone right now? So at Vodafone, this is a new position. Mm. Uh, so I am creating the position <laughs> as we speak. How long have you been working there? Uh, since January, ah, uh, like yes. a few months. Yeah, new. And it's a new effort in uh, doing uh, research and innovation in data science, what mm -hmm. is called data science. Um, so I'm creating all the processes to be able to do research. We have also created a PhD internship program, so PhD students can come and, and work with us for a few months on mm -hmm. research projects. We have a, a, a plan to um, have a stronger presence in scientific conferences also. So I just came actually from another conference yes. and, okay. um, and then publishing, doing research projects and, and, um, and, and publishing I them in conferences. So now far as Photophone in using artificial intelligence in an innovative way? Well, they are already. Yeah. I think they is, a, is one of the um, big strategic uh, directions of the company and they are very committed. Uh, I think the fact that they are investing in this research area, for example, is, is a testament to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are uh, a number of areas where artificial intelligence you know, is being used. And I think this is something that is very much being embraced by the company. There's a lot of interest. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be really exciting in the next you know, Do couple Do they have years. an area or an application that is different from other telecom companies that, they're, that Photophone is better in? You well, can brag about it yeah, if you want. Yeah, well, actually, to <laughs> be honest, I, I think I'm too new to the company right now, and so I think really there are know. ongoing efforts, but I don't think I can really sort of like pinpoint, you know, one no, in particular. No? Yeah. Okay, okay. So what, 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 is, what will the future be? The future? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a good question. There is a lot of debate right now, both in, in terms of like the general public, but also in terms of the scientific community regarding the future of artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and the intersection between artificial intelligence and society. Uh, because uh, even today, but obviously even more in the future, our life is going to be completely uh, permeated by artificial intelligence systems. Yeah. Um, and in a, an invisible way, many, in many cases. So as our dependency on artificial intelligence systems increases as we delegate mm -hmm. more and more tasks into mm -hmm. artificial intelligence systems. We really need to think very carefully about how we're going to be designing those systems and also um, what is the, the role that the systems play and what is the role that the humans play. Exactly. Because the humans uh, obviously uh, still have a role to play. <laughs> and, and this is something that is uh, definitely open questions. A lot of it is all open questions. There is a lot of hype right now about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
which I think is positive in the sense that a lot of people want to study now artificial intelligence. There's a lot of startups, there's a lot of investment, a lot of venture capital. Sure. But at the same time, I think there is definitely a lot of uh, inflated expectations. Mm. Uh, so, uh, in fact, I, I just read this article this morning on uh, Watson and how one of the goals of Watson was they to were tackle here cancer, yesterday. right? Yes, yes. And how they realized it's a very difficult problem <laughs> to solve. Um, but we've seen how they work with it yesterday. Yeah, but we see that it detection. It, it so, so uh, um, from what I've read, you know, it can help in a small number of cancers of right now yes. and uh, with the assistance you know, of a human. So it's basically going to take much longer than what the press initially you know, said. Sure. So I think it's important to, um, Be to understand exactly mm. th because otherwise artificial intelligence has already gone through another yeah. era of sort of like hype and then you know yes, uh, yes. the death and valley we'll you know again. Uh, yeah so we have to be a little bit realistic so, so what do you think as a last question what do you think uh, will never be handed over to artificial intelligence will, but will be always be human well that's a very uh, very uh, difficult question yeah so philosophical and yeah deep. <laughs> i mean uh, one of the questions is always like you know Consciousness, you know, will mm. will um, an artificial intelligence system have consciousness? How how do you measure consciousness? Yes. Um, I think. Beautiful. Uh, yes. Consciousness. It's. Um, I think we are redefining also who we are. I think every technology has changed us as a species. You know, writing, uh, reading. I mean, a lot of the new technologies that we've invented mm -hmm. have changed and shaped our brains, and obviously. Uh, this is already happening today with the sort of like intimate relationship that we have with technology. Mm -hmm. So um, even when you say which human characteristic, you know, even we are changing. So yeah, I think true. I think it's important that we also need to ask ourselves how do we want to evolve as a species That's as a we develop question. this uh, symbi symbiotic relationship with technology. And I think this is a very important question that we need to ask ourselves. And we will be talking about that more today. Mm, excellent. You'll be preparing for your speech yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we will be uh, hearing you. Thank you. Uh, maybe you can join us in another conference. Take a look at the YouTube channel. There is the Science and Information Conference page. And you can find talks with lots of experts, and then you can decide to join us another time. Thank you.